Okay, so I've decided to do this thing because I don't see a lot of African American girls in my position that's going to go through what I'm going through. I do see a few, and you few out there has helped me and pushed me to want to do this and um, really move forward with talking to you guys about it because. It's really no one to talk about this. It's really not. You know, it's not. So, although I am not a blogger, I am not a nothing, actually, internet person. I really don't like that type of scene. I feel like this would be a good release during this process. I feel like this process is going to be a long process. It is going to be a long process. And you guys that are going to be down with me in this process and get to know me and my life and, I don't know, stuff that I do and stuff I'm going to go through. I feel like I might get a little family over here. I might get a little family. So it's people to talk to. So... I'm going to do it. Um, a little bit about me. I'm 37. Freshly 37. I want to say even though it's been about four months. I'm still holding on to 36. Anyway. But I'm about 37. Um, I'm engaged. Newly engaged. Um, I like it too. It is nice. He did good. He did good. He did good. Um, my fiance and I have been together going on three years. Um, we just got our first house and we are ready to build our family. Um, I'm currently in law school and I currently have been working at my job for the, my federal job for the last 16 years. Um, I handle, right now, I handle a lot of like arbitrations and stuff that is going on um, between labor unions and things like that. Um, but that's a little background about me. Um, my mom and dad been together for 38 years. Um, I'm an only girl and I'm a baby. Anyway, enough of that. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, so the ball dropped. The ball dropped when I found out that trying to conceive was actually going to be a journey. Who thinks that trying to conceive would be a journey? No one really, right? You think that your whole life you've been told not to get pregnant, don't get pregnant, you don't want to get pregnant too young. So you think it's so easy. Yeah, I just almost bit my mouth, jaw. But you think it's so easy to get pregnant, right? After people made it like, man, you barely kiss a guy, you're going to get pregnant, right? Yeah, so it's not the case. Um, bomb drops. You start looking at stuff. You start reading. You know that's what happened. I started researching, started reading. Um, I wanted to, you know, take all my prenatal pills ahead of time, all of that. So that's what we started doing. We started taking our prenatals, started things like that, and taking both of us taking, you know, multivitamins, vitamin Ds, things like that to make sure that our bodies were on the up and up. Um, I slowed down on my mimosas, things like that. Um, after doing my research, I did have this little book. Um, it was a school book, obviously, <laughs> but in the back of it, I started logging. And I know this looks crazy to you guys, but if you know, then you know. 
Okay. Started logging. And I started logging in about August. You know, um, at that time, I was not, yeah, I was not keeping track of my basal temp, um, basal body temperature, um, baby T. But, you know, I just started keeping track of things. And um, as a black woman, you know, we, I don't know if it was just me, maybe, but I feel personally, I'll say in my opinion, that we are not taught about our reproductive system the way we should be as young ladies, as young girls. I'm talking about 14, 15, when things start to change, okay? We are not taught anything. Okay, we're not taught, we're just taught like not to get pregnant, <laughs> okay? Not to get pregnant and about your period. I mean, you're bleeding. Here goes, ah, that's how you clean up, that's what you do, blah, 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 right? Stay clean, okay? Cleanliness. Cleanliness and don't get pregnant. Those are the, that's the goals. That's what you think. That's what you know. Um, nobody tells you about like your cycle and how many days. I keep looking down because I have like notes, but how many days your cycle it should be or it is and things like that which uh, your cycle tells you a lot it tells you about your hormones and things that's off with your body that if you paid attention to you will know you know but nobody tells you these things so when this bone dropped and i started doing the research and things like that i started keeping track so first thing i would say to any ladies out there start keeping track keep track keep track of everything you know keep track of the first day you start your periods the last day you can keep track of how you felt each day um your body i mean of course they have apps to do this it's something about writing it down that just i don't know it just really soothes me um so i started keeping track you know and I even started keeping track of when I started like a tea. Like say I got like pink stork. I did try pink stork. I liked it. Um, my period was normal though. My period is a 28 day period. Oh, let's just say it was a 28 day period. So um, they have vertex in their tea and that can change a person's period if it's already regular so I kind of slowed down on that but I wrote down the day I started the tea I wanted to know how many days I started the tea and what it did to change and what changed you know I would know from when I wrote it down so write down everything that's my plan with that um something else that's not told to us and maybe this is just any woman, you know, maybe this is women that's not color women. Maybe this is just women, period, I don't know, but follicular, literal. Like, nobody's telling you that your cycle goes through these different phases. Like, oh, I'm in my follicular phase. No, nobody says that. Nobody, no, that's not the thing. Follicular, nobody says that. So, like, I'm, I learned all of these things, right? Because I'm tracking now. So I learned all these things and, you know, time goes by. And I will, I did start um, a ovulation protector, um, ovulation predictor, protector, no, predictor kit. And I did that to find out if I was even ovulating and to see what day I ovulated on. Right, so I watched a million TTC videos. Thank you for all the ladies out there before me that did a million TTC videos, even the one five, six, seven years ago. Those are still good, and yes, and I still watch them sometimes to this day. So I watched a million videos, and it showed me how to OBK, OPK, question predictor kits, right. So it did show me I was ovulating. I start seeing the dark line. I'm excited. Okay, I'm ovulating. Yes. Okay. Um, we're going to say in September, I started tracking temps. As you see right here. 
I started tracking temps. And these are OBKs. Yeah. So, looks like a crazy little book, right? So, I started that. And what, you know, it's a lot of videos on that too. And I highly suggest it. The temperature bands, five, six, maybe because of COVID now, $7. Um, and I'm making this video. You know, another reason I'm making this video is 2022. Let's see the protocol and the routine 2022. Um, so, highly suggest tracking your temperature. Track my temperature and tracking your temperature will guarantee if you ovulate it or not. Like if you have a hard time looking at the colors and the ovulation um, predict predictor kits, I'm just going to keep chopping that word up. Just chop it. If you keep out, if you have a problem doing that, body temping, you won't. You'll learn what that means. And when you body, when you BBT, in the TT see, community, you guys know what I mean. But when you BBT, you will see your temperatures change. And it's like, oh my God, I can't believe like I'm that different from I was last week, but you are. And um, that's something that, you know, you learn with the follicular luteal phase of your cycle, which is something you never learned when we were young. But... With the BBT, you'll also notice um, you're hot. You're going to be really hot. You should be, you know, after you ovulate um, on your fifth, sixth, seventh day, maybe eighth day. And that's because that's when your testosterone is going to be high. That's when the baby would be sticking to your uterus and your temp's going to go up because you're an incubator. You're going to turn into a little incubator, right? So... That's at least that's what I had researched. I am not a doctor. Do not take anything I say uh, over your physicians. Okay, let me say that. I probably should have said that in the beginning. Let me say that now. Do not take it over your physicians. Um, please do what your physician says. This is just from my research, from my notes, and my experience. This is my journey. Well, man, his journey. But this is our journey, and I'm sharing it with you guys because it's going to be a journey. A journey. So, um, let's get back on track. So, it'll show you your little incubation phase, and then it'll show you when it starts going back to normal. And, you know, you'll find out that if that happens, then, of course, you're not pregnant because you will stay an incubator if you were pregnant. And if it goes back to normal, then your period's coming and you're not. Right? So, that kept happening. Why? Okay. So, that kept happening. Um, and we keep tracking. We're tracking. We're tracking. And... You're going to see the tracking kind of get kind of shallow. And the temperatures get kind of shallow. This is when you can see hope gets lost. This is November. November. So, after, since August to November, right? So after a few months, you're like, wait, I'm on this, okay? I know when I ovulate, I know, a, I'm down to the point of the egg drop, okay? What's going on, right? You make that gynecologist appointment. That's what I did. I made the gynecologist appointment. I wanted to see my OB. My OB has been my OB for about eight years now. So, love you, girl. <laughs> anyway, so... She is amazing. So I get in with her. 
I tell her, I want to have a baby. I was going to say her name, but I want to have a baby. She's like, oh my God, you do. I'm so excited. We're going to go through the journey together, right? Okay. I'm like, yay. So she's like, I want an HSG test done because I remember you having pain on your left side and I, um, from an ultrasound she did from the outside, or was it like one of those ones you stick inside? I think it was one of those ones you stick inside, actually. She did about five, six years ago, and she felt that my tube on this side had fluid in it, and it's the hydroplexy. I would, okay, look, I'm not even going to try it, but just know, I'm not chopping that word. <laughs> just know that it's blocked with fluid, my left tube. Okay, and she said this about five years ago. That's why she's a doctor. She's amazing, and she wanted me to get an HSG then. What? There you went. I'm like living life, I'm like traveling. I think I was in like somewhere, Cabo, somewhere. I'm not HSG. Calm down, right? Now here I am engaged. Yes. So I come. She's like, I want the HSG. Now I've been scared of HSG. Uh, as many girls say on here, yes, they hurt. Yes, it hurt it, and I was scared for a reason. Anyway, and she gives me a referral for SSG. My insurance covers it. Boom. Amazing. I tell her, okay, before I went to her, ladies, I had a whole list of stuff. Can I see my list? Of stuff. Do the list. Know the stuff. Do your research. Go in there. Take control. Um, as a black woman, you guys, not I'm not as any woman, but you guys know that, you know, back in the day they would take African American women's uteruses out um, without permission. You guys all know about the Tuskegee experiment and just other things like that. Um, so I've never had any like surgeries or anything like that so other than my boobies and they're really small but we're not gonna go there the bottom line is petrified right so i go in there with a list and i just suggest any woman okay any woman to go in there with your list ready go in there with your concerns go on there with um of course knowing how long your cycle is if you're regular cycle i have a very regular cycle very 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 regular okay um like to the T, like I can count it, it's gonna fall on that day. Um, fortunately, but that made me even more scared of because what's going on? Okay, so she tells me HSG. I tell her because of the research I did that I wanted a, a pill for anxiety be, so I could take it before the HSG, I wanted painkillers, I want painkillers. So I could not, not ibuprofen, prescribe me a painkiller for it, okay? And, of course, she gave me antibiotics. So she gives me all those things, and it was not as bad. It hurt it because of the cramps, like, after, but during the process of shooting the dye up there and all of that, I actually didn't feel anything. I think I was too doped up on anxiety pill or you know I think it was a, a volume they called it yeah a volume and painkillers definitely definitely take something for that pain I do the HSG and the tech tells me because at my place where they like, ah, it's only the doctors that do it so they tell me that yeah one tube is blocked with fluid, and the other tube is partially blocked. Okay? The bombs are dropping, aren't they? Bombs and drop. Bomb drop. Okay. Um, as I said four months before the HSG in August. I have been drinking teas, all the reproductive stuff. Um, I did do Serapote for about two months. Um, I still do it. I just feel like it 
cleans up everything. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So. Sad. That's all I can say. At that time, I was so sad. My mom was in there with me, holding my hand. I know normally I don't let people in there, but I was, like, in a major panic, even with the volume. So, my mom was in there holding my hand, and I was so crying, crying. And then the tech was like, you can still get pregnant. You know, one tube is partially open. That means, like, we go in there, you know? And But that's just loss of life, right? So that's where this story starts. The story starts with someone, you know, it's just crazy. We all look so normal. I go on here and I'm watching the videos. The girls are beautiful. It's like you would never think that you're going to go through anything like this, you know. You work so hard, 16 years on the job. I'm on my fourth degree. I'm in law school. And it's like, what? That? You don't think that. So, that's where my story begins. And, hope you guys stick around for the rest of this journey. Because it is going to be a journey. Um, I'm going to try to do these on Tuesdays. And update you guys every Tuesday. So, yeah, I'm going to leave you guys with that. That was a lot. Okay. So, yeah. And my doctor called me. And then we did a follow-up visit. And that'll be the next video. We'll go over the follow-up visit of the bomb. Two, boom, boom. Bomb dropping. And um, being newly engaged and you know can't give your spouse a kid that's reality it's my reality um so in the next video we're gonna go over the 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 you know follow up visit and we're gonna go over what what the next steps diagnosis and things like that i really hope that this journey that i go on i help girls like the ones that i've seen helped me they were really informative and you know you guys have helped me so i'm gonna get on here and i just hope that i can help girls too and the little journey that i go on you know you guys will be here it's worrying me the whole way because we're gonna do this we're gonna get that baby yay. Okay, that's the very first video, and I'm just going to go with it. We're going to get the baby, and we're going to do this, and we're going to go after this thing. Can't find the pudding. 